This video covers goodness of fit and the likelihood ratio test, both in the context of loaded and probit models. By the end of this video, you should be able to calculate and interpret goodness of fit measures for a loaded or probit model, and conduct a likelihood ratio test to test hypotheses about multiple coefficients in a loaded or probit model. We'll begin this discussion uh, by a, a doing a brief review of maximum likelihood estimation. In particular, we're going to contrast um, what's done in um, a loaded uh, or probit model uh, underneath the black box, if you will, as compared to what we might be more familiar with um, in an ordinary least squares model. Uh, so this first line has uh, a very basic um, OLS, or nearly squares model, where Y depends linearly on X, uh, and it also includes this error term U. So as implied by the name least squares, the objective function of uh, ordinary least squares is to minimize the sum of squared residuals. Recall that a residual is essentially like the predicted error term. It's the difference between the actual and the predicted y. Uh, and so in minimizing the sum of squared residuals, um, in uh, perhaps layman's terms, we're trying to uh, minimize the overall error of the model. Uh, you might notice that uh, the loaded and uh, probit functions given in this second line uh, do not contain uh, an error term u. And so in that sense, it doesn't make sense to talk about something such as the sum of squared residuals. Uh, and sure enough, uh, in estimating a loaded or probit model, uh, a, a computer, a software uh, package is going to be doing um, a rather different procedure, although uh, intuitively, uh, I, I think you might agree in a moment that it's doing something uh, quite similar. Um, so it is using uh, maximum likelihood estimation. And uh, what that means is that instead of uh, minimizing errors, uh, minimizing the sum of squared residuals, uh, we are instead maximizing the probability of seeing the data. Uh, so in more technical terms, we are going to define uh, the likelihood as uh, the product of uh, a number of things. So recall that uh, the probability of uh, multiple things happening at the same time, uh, they're independent, is also the product of those probabilities. And so we are going to multiply together the probability of observing uh, whatever the actual outcome for observation number one is. Uh, we're going to multiply that by the probability of observing the actual outcome for observation two, uh, so on and so forth. And so the likelihood is the product of all of these probabilities. Uh, notice that the probability according to the loaded and probit model uh, depends uh, not only on an independent variable, uh, but also on these estimated parameters. And so the uh, maximum uh, likelihood estimation uh, method is going to select the uh, beta zero and beta one in this case, uh, which is going to maximize this likelihood function. Uh, so just to make this a little bit more concrete, uh, here um, are a few data points. So let's just suppose for the sake of argument that there were only three data points in this data set. Uh, so uh, we have, um, following this uh, previous example, where y was uh, an indicator for graduating from uh, high school, having a high school diploma, and the one independent variable in the model uh, was this score on a standardized test called the ASVAB. Uh, so in this table, we have three individuals, uh, with uh, each with their own ASVAB score uh, and uh, their high school grad status. Uh, we also have the predicted probability, uh, in this case from a logit model, uh, based on their ASVAB score, that predicted probability of graduating from high school. Uh, so let's think about what the likelihood uh, function would look like in this case. Uh, well, the likelihood is going to be the product of uh, three probabilities. Uh, so notice that this in this uh, first row, uh, the individual uh, it was actually a high school graduate. Uh, well, according to the predicted probability, the probability that, that person was a high school graduate was 0 0.97. So the first part of the likelihood function is 0 0.97. Uh, we're going to multiply that by something similar in the uh, second row. Uh, in the second row, we see this person was also a high school graduate. They had an 85% probability of graduating. And so we're going to multiply that by the 85% probability of observing uh, that, that outcome that they did indeed graduate. Uh, 
uh, we're going to multiply it by one more thing, uh, going to this uh, third row. Uh, notice this individual was not a high school graduate. Uh, they had a predicted probability of 0.64 of graduating from high school. Well, that also means that they had a uh, 1 minus that number, so a 0.36 uh, probability of not graduating from high school. Uh, so the term and the likelihood here is going to be that 0. Uh, 3.6. Okay, so the product of these three probabilities is going to be uh, the likelihood function. So note that if we had uh, changed the values of beta 0 and beta 1, then we would have gotten a different set of predicted probabilities and therefore a different likelihood function, uh, but the process of maximizing likelihood should result in a relatively higher predicted probabilities for those individuals who uh, did graduate from high school and relatively lower predicted probabilities for those who did not graduate from high school. Uh, one final uh, technical note that uh, will be relevant for what follows um, is, is just a, a brief note about how uh, a statistical software program will actually maximize likelihood in practice. So it turns out that instead of uh, maximizing uh, just that likelihood function itself, it is going to uh, maximize the natural log uh, of the likelihood function, sometimes just shortened to uh, log likelihood. Uh, it does this for two reasons. Um, so first, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this has, is actually the same uh, objective function. So uh, the natural logarithm is a monotonic function, and so maximizing the likelihood uh, achieves the exact same objective as maximizing the natural log of the likelihood. Uh, it's also uh, worth noting a property of uh, logarithms where the natural log of L, where L is a product of a bunch of things, uh, is also equal to the, uh, the sum of logs. So we could write this as the natural log of the probability of observing the first observation plus the natural log of the probability of observing the second observation, so on and so forth. And it turns out that in writing uh, this log likelihood as the sum, uh, it is mathematically easier to maximize that function. One final point is that log likelihood is always a negative number. The reason is that the likelihood is a probability, meaning that it cannot exceed 1, and the log of a number less than 1 is always negative. Right, now that we've seen that OLS and maximum likelihood models like loaded and probit have different objective functions, namely minimizing SSR versus maximizing log likelihood, uh, we can see why uh, output from these two models uh, may differ in a number of, uh, of other ways. So this table is going to summarize uh, why uh, a number of statistics are different in uh, OLS versus max maximum likelihood estimation models. Uh, so this first row uh, just repeat, uh, repeats what we just uh, noted that OLS uses an objective of minimizing the sum of squared residuals, meaning it selects the uh, estimated intercept and, and coefficients uh, to minimize uh, that quantity, whereas maximum likelihood is, as the name implies, going to select the uh, intercept and uh, coefficients to maximize the log of likelihood. Uh, so in OLS, you're familiar with a number of uh, statistics. Uh, for example, to measure goodness of fit, in OLS, you would use the R squared, which depends uh, in part on the sum of squared residuals. Uh, there is a, an analogous uh, uh, goodness of fit measure in maximum likelihood models called pseudo R squared. And if you compare the two formulas on the second line, uh, you'll see uh, some similarities. Uh, and in particular, notice that instead of being based on sum of squared residuals, the pseudo R squared is based on the log likelihood. Similarly, if you wish to perform a hypothesis test on a linear restriction in an OLS model, you would use the F statistic, which is based on the sum of squared residuals of the restricted and unrestricted models. There is, again, an analogous uh, statistic for maximum likelihood models, namely the likelihood ratio uh, test statistic, and that is based on the log likelihood of unrestricted and restricted models. Uh, so for the rest of this video, we will focus on these measures of goodness of fit and how to test a restriction in a maximum likelihood model.
So to measure goodness of fit in OLS, again, we calculated the R squared value, which depends on the sum of squared residuals and the total sum of squared. In a logit or probit model or other maximum likelihood model, we can measure uh, what's called pseudo R squared, and that is equal to one minus the log likelihood divided by the log likelihood of what we call a constant only model. So this L zero is the likelihood of a constant only model. So what do we mean by a constant only model? Uh, well, if we wanted to predict the probability that some binary dependent variable is one, uh, but suppose we were trying to do that with no independent variables, then we would just be left with this rather simple looking uh, equation. And note that uh, for whatever uh, value we predict uh, beta zero to be, the predicted probability will always be the same. In other words, predicted probability is always a constant. Uh, so think of this as a very uh, crude model. If uh, we knew nothing about, uh, say, an individual, but we were trying to predict their likelihood of having a high school diploma, uh, we would probably just predict the same prob. Uh, we would have to predict the same probability for everyone. Uh, notice that this is also uh, quite comparable to the definition of R squared in OLS, where the total sum of squares can also be thought of as the sum of squared residuals of a constant only model. And again, a constant only model uh, in an OLS equation uh, would uh, simply be that the predicted y's are uh, the average value of y. Uh, now, in addition to uh, measuring a pseudo R squared, uh, we could measure an alternative. Uh, this may be a little more intuitive, but we'll see shortly that it has some limitations. Uh, we could measure uh, in a loaded or probit model simply the proportion of outcomes correctly predicted. Uh, so if we assume that a predicted probability greater than one half uh, would indicate that more likely than not, the uh, predicted outcome is a one, uh, the predicted value of the binary outcome is one or zero otherwise, then we could simply ask, uh, how many of those uh, binary predictions are correct. Uh, interpreting these goodness of fit measures can be a bit of a challenge, and so let's try to do that uh, with an example. So if we were to estimate a logit model to predict uh, the likelihood that an individual had a high school diploma based on their ASVAB standardized test score, uh, we would end up getting a pseudo R squared of 0.3, and we would get a proportion of outcomes uh, correctly predicted of 0.91. So let's see if we can make some sense of each of those. Uh, so unfortunately, pseudo R squared does not have the same uh, somewhat intuitive interpretation as R squared, a proportion of variation uh, explained in uh, the dependent variable. Um, instead, it may be easiest to think about um, the, the range. So a pseudo R squared can range from 0 to 1. So a pseudo R squared of 0 means that the log likelihood of our model is the same as the log likelihood of a constant only model. Uh, so in a sense, pseudo R squared of zero means that our model's predictive power has not improved at all on a, uh, on a constant only model. If pseudo R squared were one, uh, that would mean that this uh, log likelihood of our model would have to be zero, which uh, means essentially that we're making perfect predictions. Um, so one, um, one way to think about the 0.30 uh, is that uh, perhaps we've uh, gone 30% of the way from a very crude constant-only model uh, to a model that makes perfect predictions. Um, so in, in light of this fact that we've only improved by 30%, this second measure, uh, the 91% of outcomes correctly predicted, uh, may sound surprisingly high. Uh, now, one reason is that even though this proportion does range from 0 to 1, uh, it would be uh, actually very unusual to see this proportion of outcomes correctly predicted to be very low, given that we are predicting a binary outcome. Uh, so one important thing to note is that if we were to uh, look at the, the data set, we should find that uh, approximately 91% of the individuals in our data set have a high school diploma. Uh, so if you think about uh, what sort of crude guess you might make uh, if you had to guess uh, whether an individual has a high school diploma, uh, 
uh, and you didn't know anything about them, this uh, should sound like the constant only model, uh, you would probably guess that everyone in the data set has a high school diploma. And in fact, you would be correct 91% of the time, since only 9% of individuals do not have a high school diploma. Uh, so uh, in light of that, uh, uh, having a logit model which correctly predicts whether individuals have a high school diploma 91% of the time uh, now doesn't sound so impressive. Uh, and so in short, when we're looking at a pseudo R squared, uh, we can think of zero as being uh, a baseline uh, where the model is, is not improved on this uh, very crude constant only model. Whereas when interpreting the proportion of outcomes correctly predicted, we should keep in mind that even a very simple model uh, could predict a proportion much greater than zero. And in fact, it would be uh, strange to see it uh, be less than one half, uh, given that we only are trying to predict a one versus a zero, that binary outcome. But one final thing that we may want to do in a logit or probit model or other maximum likelihood model is to perform a hypothesis test uh, to uh, test whether uh, certain coefficients have uh, certain values. Um, and in general, we, we may want to test multiple coefficients. Uh, this should sound familiar from the idea of an f-test in ordinary least squares. Uh, so in this example, uh, I've written down a logit or probit model where we predict the, the probability of a binary outcome based on two independent variables, x1 and x2. And uh, just for the sake of argument, uh, suppose we'd like to test whether uh, both of those uh, coefficients on x1 and x2, beta1 and beta2, are, are both equal to zero. Uh, so that's our null hypothesis. Our alternative hypothesis is that at least one of those is not zero. I note that we could have a variety of, of different uh, tests here, but the, the remainder of the procedure will be the same. Uh, so what we would do to uh, conduct what's known as a likelihood ratio test, again, this is analogous to the F-test for uh, ordinary least squares. Uh, we will uh, first derive a restricted model. And to derive a restricted model, we start with the original model at the, the top of the screen, and we assume uh, the null hypothesis. So if we assume that beta 1 and beta 2 are both 0, then both of these terms become zero. And of course, zero multiplied by x1 or x2 are, are also both zero. And so you'll notice that we're left with this very simple constant only model where the predicted probability is just the logit function of uh, beta zero. Uh, once we have uh, estimates of both of those models, we can calculate what's called the likelihood ratio statistic. So that uh, the formula for that statistic is given here. And notice that there are two different versions of log likelihood. Uh, UR stands for unrestricted, R stands for restricted. Uh, and so uh, again, this is the restricted model. And uh, before the markings I made uh, up here, uh, what we started with is the unrestricted model. And once we have that likelihood ratio statistic, uh, statistic we are going to compare it to a critical value. Uh, that critical value comes from the chi-squared distribution. Uh, we will need a degrees of freedom for that uh, chi-squared statistic, and we'll calculate that as the difference in the degrees of freedom between the restricted and the unrestricted model. Uh, so in essence, that typically ends up uh, uh, being the number of uh, parameters that were eliminated uh, from the, uh, the, uh, the model to, to get the, the restricted model. So if the likelihood ratio statistic is greater than that chi-squared critical value, then we would reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we would fail to reject. Uh, note that uh, chi-squared, the likelihood ratio statistic and the chi-squared uh, critical values are all positive, and so we don't have to worry about positives versus negatives.